So this is a video about making a video, because that's the way the world is going. Um, and that's just where my brain's been today. I really tried to make uh, my patrons a video yesterday, and I was all dressed up and, and everything. Today I'm just wearing comfy pants with paint on them. and. The light is horrible in here, and I'm wearing this cheap cardigan, probably from Target or something, that belonged to my grandma. She lived until she was 96. It's pretty good. Anyway, she was so cute. Um, the sleeves are a little short, but whatever. I don't know if it means that I'm like an old buddy daddy that I wear clothes from both of my grandmas. One of them's been gone for like a year and a half and the other one like 10 years. Or if it's just like that they were super hip ladies. I don't care. I just like it. So while I was sitting down um, to think about filming this new song for you, I started making up a new song. <laughs> Another new song. This is a piece of blank sheet music. This is a pencil that belonged to my grandpa. I'm gonna write some sheet music. This is an awesome pencil sharpener. This is the best stapler I ever had. This is one of the only things I brought with me from my engineering firm. The stapler is amazing. Anyway, um, building Patreon um, and trying to figure out, you know, how to get a sustainable income making my music into recordings and videos um, and writing new music. Um, just kind of has changed my brain a lot and in a good way and that's exactly what I was hoping for when I quit my engineering job and um, you know I was a pretty good engineer I think and I had a lot of success and I proved to myself that I could do all the things and I've smashed some of the paradigms that are really pervasive in the engineering culture. It's a very male-dominated um, industry to this day. I just didn't see how I could just keep working in a cubicle for somebody else, not have you know the freedom of my own innovation and be driving 2,000 miles a week and working 50 or 60 hours at least a week, um, an hour away from my house and just being surrounded by a lot, a lot, a lot of stress and a lot of politics. I mean, the engineering part is the smallest part of, of that job. The biggest part is negotiations, politics, regulations, and dealing with different levels of bureaucracy that are regular regulatory agencies that you have to um, constantly be navigating. Um, and it's just, it's a real impediment to efficient progress and it just really pissed me off. And I, um, I really, you know, burned myself out um, doing it. And I'm still um, kind of recovering. If I was near where I want to be, I'd have really awesome percussion tracks on all of my songs. I'd have, you know, full Pro Tools capability, the budget to hire people who are good at that stuff to just do that for me. I really wish that I could do everything that I want to do by myself, but I, you know, we have to face the fact that it's likely that, you know, at some point or another, we have to pay for somebody to help us do things that we 
don't have time for so that we can focus on the things that we're good at. That's why I'm on Patreon and hoping that that will continue to build. And it's frustrating because it's like you need to have something awesome to, to put on there in order to attract patrons. But you need patrons to be able to afford to make something awesome. So it's kind of a chicken and egg thing. But it's awesome, and I'm really grateful for it. Um, and I'm really grateful for my patrons that I do have. Um, you know, it's kind of like I'm making enough right now to pay for a piano tuning. <laughs> Which I really need to have my piano tuned, actually. I gotta call Joe, my piano tuner. <laughs> The first thing you need to do when writing any music is to draw your treble cleft. <laughs> Not perfect, but practice makes better. I'm gonna do uh, the bass cleft here. Okay, how are you doing? about my piano. Um, my parents bought me when I was uh, seven, I think. It, there wasn't much around Albuquerque back then, um, and there was nothing where I grew up, so we'd drive into town on Sundays, and, uh, and there was a lady that played the harp in the restaurant, <laughs> so... I don't remember ever sitting at the table eating breakfast. I just would go straight to the stage and sit on the edge of the stage and um, watch this lady play harp. So I really wanted to play the harp. My mom asked her what she recommended and she said um, oh, she's got to learn how to play piano first, which I was super bummed about. <laughs> I was really pissed, actually. So thus began my piano lessons, which is the only reason I can read sheet music and kind of write it. I'm not sure. It's not like, it's not going to be perfect, and it takes me a long time to do it. But it is the way that I remember songs the best for later. There's some that I wish that I had really captured better when I first wrote them. When I was 12, I had, a, I had piano lessons on Thursdays. And my teacher, Debbie, I called her and I said, uh, like, I just want to play sheet music now and anymore. Like, I'm not going to do all this theory and Beethoven and all that crap. And she said, no. And I said, well, I quit then. And I quit. <laughs> After that, I picked up the guitar. Well, I think I'd already started. My neighbor loaned me his guitar, which is a really cool thing to do when I was 10. And we were going to Colorado for spring break or something. And he loaned me um, his classical guitar. And I think a chord book, like an Ernie Ball chord book. And I just remember sitting on the floor in the cabin in Colorado and figuring out my first chords and stuff. And that was that. Um, I got a pawn shop guitar after that. I had a steel string guitar. Um, like a $60 pawn shop steel string guitar. And I played that all through high school. 
I played classical guitar on my steel string, and I could read guitar music and do all this finger stuff, and if you watch my videos, you'll notice I do not do any of that stuff. It drives me crazy, and I just don't have the patience for it. So, you know, someday, hopefully, I'll have, like, a lead guitar player that I really get along with well and that likes my songs and isn't a prima donna and wants to play lead guitar for me. <laughs> That's a lot of qualifications right there. Got a classical guitar and I played folk music and rock music and pop music on my classical guitar until 2000... Well, whenever I made my first YouTube video, that was the day that I got my Zager steel string. <laughs> so almost all, I mean, 90% of the songs that I've written over the past, um, what year is it? Were written on a classical guitar. And the sound guys hated it when I started playing live gigs. They're like, your guitar sounds like shit. You need to get get a new guitar, and I was like, they're so expensive. But then I found the Zager, which is a really good deal, and i um, been really happy with it. Plus, they have the best customer service in the world. It's amazing.